I'm really excited to introduce you to the design recipe. The design recipe is a six step process that you can use to design any program. And in this course, we're going to be practicing the same six step process to write bigger and bigger programs. But first, we're going to start with a small example. So let's say that uh, we want to design a program that converts temperatures from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So this program might be useful for talking to people in foreign countries about the weather or about cooking. And in the design recipe, we are told to follow the six steps for writing this program. So the first step is to define the data that this program needs to handle. So here, for a program that converts temperatures from Fahrenheit to Celsius, the data may be just temperatures. And we need to say what a temperature is. That's what a data definition does. It says what a something is. So let's write a data definition. It's just a comment that says a temperature is what? Every data definition looks like this. It says a temperature is what or a whatever is something. Okay. Now here, a temperature is basically a number and we kind of know what a number is, so it's not that hard to define what a temperature is. We could just write a temperature is a number, and now we're done. In the rest of the course, we're going to see more complex data definitions, but this is what we have for now. The next step, step two, is to write down for our function a signature, a purpose statement, and a header. So what does a signature look like? Well, a signature begins by naming the function. We have to pick a name for our function. Okay. Um, I would uh, pick a name that is somewhat uh, indicative of what the function does. So if we're going to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius, maybe F2C is a good name for this function. And then we put a colon after the name. And then we're going to put in what input the function takes. So here, the function should take a temperature as input. So I'm going to use the word I just defined in step one and put it here. That's the input, and it's a kind of data that we've already defined. And then I'm going to put an arrow, that's a hyphen and a greater than sign, and then say what kind of output is produced by this function. And the output is also a temperature, so I'm going to put the word temperature here. That's a signature for the function. The signature is the name of the function, a colon, the input of the function, an arrow, and then the output of the function. The next thing I need to do is to write down a purpose statement for the function. That's a sentence or so that describes what the function does. It should be a little bit more informative than the signature. So here's a purpose that um, could work for this function. Uh, the function is going to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius. Now, this is a, a fine purpose statement. Let me give you an example of a bad purpose statement. So here's a bad purpose statement. Suppose the, the purpose just says, um, uh, takes temperature as input and returns temperature. Okay. That's a bad purpose statement because I already know all that just by looking at the signature. The signature says this function takes a temperature input and returns a temperature. So I don't need a purpose statement just to repeat the same information. The purpose statement should give me something else. Okay, say a little bit more. Like, oh, it's, it doesn't convert Celsius to Kelvin. It converts Fahrenheit to Celsius. Okay, that's a good information about um, that, that the purpose statement can give. Okay. The last step, uh, the, the last part of step two is to write the header for the function. Okay, what is a header? Well, the header is basically the very beginning of the function definition, but just the very beginning. So what do I mean by the very beginning? Well, every function definition begins with left paren and the word define, so I'm going to put that. And then, because we're defining a function, another left paren, and uh, the name of the function, which we just chose, F2C, and now I also need to choose a name for the input. Okay, this is the Fahrenheit temperature, and uh, the letter F might be a good abbreviation for that input and then a close paren. Okay, so so far it looks just like a function definition, but then I'm not going to do any more work. I'm just going to put dot 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 for the body of the function and close the definition. Okay, this is the header. The header just has the name of the function, the name of the input, and nothing else. The body is just dot dot dot. Okay, so now we're done with step two because we have written a signature, a purpose, and the header. Okay, so now, going on to step three, we need to write some function examples. 
What is a function example? Well, a function example is the input that the function could get and the corresponding output that the function should produce. Okay. So here's an example. Suppose that the function gets 32. That's a number, so it's a temperature. And so this is a fine input to use in a function example. We should write down what we expect the function to produce as an output. Okay, now 32 is a freezing temperature in Fahrenheit and zero is a freezing temperature in Celsius. So we expect 32 to become zero. And that's what we write down. And that's one example. Okay, let's write a second example just to further clarify what the function is supposed to do. Uh, suppose that the function is given 212, that's a boiling temperature in Fahrenheit. Then we expect 100, that's a boiling temperature in Celsius. Okay, that's a second example. All right, we might write more examples, but let's uh, leave it uh, at two for now. The next step is to write down the template for the function. The template is like the header, but a little bit more detailed. It reminds us how we might use the inputs. Okay, so I'm going to actually start with a header. I'm just going to copy it and paste it as a starting point for the template. So instead of just dot dot dot, the template should remind us how to use the input. The input is f, and here f is just a number, so we just need to be reminded to use it, like do some arithmetic or on it or, or something. Okay, so instead of dot dot dot, I'm gonna put dot 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 and then maybe f. Just put f inside dots just to remind myself, well, I need to use f somehow. Okay, in the rest of the course, we're gonna see more complex templates, but for now, because the input f is just a number, a temperature, um, it's not much to say, but to remind ourselves that we should use f in the function. Okay, so that's a template. The next step in the design recipe is step five, to write the function definition. And a good starting point for the function definition is a template. So I'm going to copy the template and paste it here as a starting point. Okay, now the template says we should use f somehow, but how should we use f? Well, let's look at the examples. Here's a good time to look at the examples. The example, the one, the first example says that we should turn 32 into zero. So how can we turn 32? That's one possible value of f. How can we turn that f into zero? Well, you know, it looks like we're going to make the temperature smaller when we convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So to turn 32 to zero, one way would be to just subtract 32. So this and this is how we subtract 32 from f by giving the two inputs f and 32 to the subtraction. Okay, so that's our function definition. The final step is to test. And testing means to start with clicking the run button. Let's see what happens. So I get this error message. It says F2C. This name was defined previously and cannot be redefined. It's important to read the error message. Also, it's important to note this pink highlighting around this F2C, and that points out where the computer found the error. Okay, so the reason there is this error is because even though I have just one function definition for F2C in my program, I have something else that looks like a function definition because the function template really looks like a function definition. Also, the function header we wrote in step two looks like another function definition. So to the computer, it looks like we have three definitions for F2C, even though we just want the computer to look at the last one, our final function definition. So to not confuse the computer, I'm going to put a semicolon in front of my header and put a semicolon in front of my template in order to tell the computer to ignore those two lines. This is called commenting out these two lines. Okay, so now when I hit run again, I don't get an error message anymore. Instead, I get this orange black highlighting around this body of the function definition. That's telling me that the computer is worried that the code has not been tested. Okay, so let's test this code. I'm going to use F2C following the examples that we wrote in step three. So in step three, we decided, well, 32 should become zero. So let's try that out. We do get zero, so that's good. Now uh, let's try the second example. 212 should become 100. Let's try that out. 
Okay, this is not good because we get 180, which is not what we expect. We want 100, we get 180. That's not good. Okay, so now it looks like our code doesn't work. Our definition is not quite correct. Let's go back to the definition, right? So we can't just subtract 32. Okay, we have to do something else. Um, but actually, what we got from subtracting 32 is a fine starting point. You know, we got one example right, and the other example, well, 180 should become 100. How can we take 180 and turn into 100? Well, one way to do that is to divide, right? So we could take this result of subtraction and use it as the first input of dividing. Okay, and then for the second input dividing, I'm gonna put 1.8. So we're gonna divide the result of subtraction by 1.8. Okay. Now, we need to test the code again. The computer is also uh, worried, again worried, that we haven't tested this code. So again, we have to say f to c 32. That's zero, that's correct still. It's good to know that. But also try f to c 212. And now it gives us the correct answer. Okay, we could try some more tests, like, you know, what about 99.5 body temperature? We get 37.5, that looks reasonable. So um, now uh, we're done with testing, and we're happy with the result of testing, because the tests seem to match what we expect from the function examples. So we are done.